Hey everybody, it's from Daily Motor. Welcome to the live drive of the 2022 S3. This car is really exciting because it's kind of unique in the hot compact, hot compact really, sports car-ish sort of market. And we're excited to show it to you. So without any further ado, let's get going. Let us know if you're in the comments. I know I already saw some of you. I saw Sunjib and Most Wanted and a few of the others. So thank you all so much for saying hello. Some new people as well. Also, sorry if we got some winds today. We're gonna try to enunciate, keep up, up over it. Uh, it's always a little bit windier over here by the airport. We didn't want to start by the airport, but apparently they thought six o'clock was a good time to mow the lawn over by DMHQ. So that would have been worse than the wind. But anyway, back to the car and this big, giant, gaping plastic black front that is the Audi RS3. This car has a lot of character, and that's pretty cool, because here in 2022, it's something that you don't get in a lot of cars. A lot of times you get speed, you get power, you get the stats, but you don't get any soul and any character in the car. This has it with a turbocharged single turbo, and that does make a difference when you're driving. Big single turbo, five-cylinder engine, 400 horsepower, this thing will do zero to 60 in just over three and a half seconds. It's a lot of fun to drive and a lot of fun to look at. What do you think of the color, Liz? I really like this color. Everybody it's say really hello. Beautiful. Hi guys. I also, Liz, I mentioned this earlier, I wanted to show you. It's probably not gonna show up on the camera for all of you. There's a red flake in the paint. Oh. And it adds just a warmth, to, like a little bit of warmth to this color. And it's pretty cool because you don't typically think of this kind of color as warm because it's so much blue in there. But they added just a little bit of kind of a pinkish, orangish flake into the into the metallic. And it's just unique, it's just different. I think red and blue are opposite the color wheels. Perhaps. Are they? Are they? I think they are. cyan, red and cyan maybe mm, are opposite. I think it's blue. Okay. Yeah. Well, if we have any uh, fourth grade art students in the chat, yeah. they can let us know. Yeah. It's yeah. a red flake, though. I thought yeah. at first it's just like a white, but that's, yeah, it's red. Mm -hmm. That's cool. It is fun. And then you got these big old wheels with tiny, tiny tires, only 30 aspect ratio. Really got to avoid potholes with these, but they're wide. We got 265s in the front. What are we running in the rear? Probably 265s as well. Uh... Wait, that doesn't seem right. We got smaller tires in the rear. <laughs> 245, 35 R19s in the rear. Wow. And 265, 30 R19s in the front. That's uh, every now and then you see a car like that. And they, someone told me it's like a bulldog. Because you know the bulldogs with the big, big old front like paws and that's the tiny rear ones. So yeah, it technically has bigger fronts. That's fun. Yeah. And of course, Looks like six piston calipers in there gripping some big old rotors. Fun. Who do we got in the chat already? We have uh, Maverick Zook saying hi. Hello, Maverick. Uh, Sanjib would like you to do a video on the Audi Q5 Premium Plus 45. We may. <laughs> Board Guys is in the chat wondering if it's a five cylinder. It sure is. Great. Most Wanted says hello and how's your evening going? It's going well, thank you Most yeah. Wanted. I hope yours is as well. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. Say hello to Sahid Ali. Hello Sahid. Killer. Thinios. Killer BG Masterson or no, just, as just Killer? Possibly, I don't know. Um, they just have a gray name. Okay. Uh, Thimio Scrimpass or 3NG4 Xavier Soto. And uh, yes, Nun City says I prefer this color, color over green, that green in the promos. Yeah, they have a really bright radiant lime green that I'm not a big fan of. I do like the turbo blue that you can get though. I think it's called turbo blue. It's just a light blue color. It's gotcha. nice. Yeah. Neat. All right. There's a cool width to this car, especially when you kind of come at it about this angle, the, the wheel arches haunch out and it's just kind of cool. Oh, it does. Uh-huh. So it makes it's got a really cool presence to it. And then there's this little cutout right here and as Brower said that really does it for him. He likes does that. It? Yep. That's all I needed. Yep, exactly. Nice. Ah. Uh, excuse me. I'm a little stuffy today. Alrighty. A lot of black on this car. In fact, I will go back to the front real quick and point out that's one thing I'm not a huge fan of. 
I don't think the Audi badge should be black. I think the Audi badge should stand out somehow. Whether it be red, silver, body color. I just don't like how it blends all into the grill. It looks cheap to me. It looks like someone just took black spray paint and spray painted the yeah. entire front. I can definitely see that. I can see why you... Yeah. Yeah. I think they probably just wanted it to say Audi with everything else instead of people just gravitating towards sure. the emblem to know what it is. Right. Because then it shows like, oh, if you see it, that it's an Audi not by looking at the emblem itself, you are a car person. That is fair. So I can see why that would be, that would be cool. Also, black kind of looks neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure some people appreciate it. At least the center caps have silver. Uh, it looks a little classier. Back looks a little bit more just Audi A3-ish, but yeah. the big old exhaust tips give it away. That's, that's definitely one. Are they real? Nope. Oh. If you look down inside, you've actually got twin exhaust tips inside those big exhaust holes. Normal trunk. Place for your things and a net, which is good because that keeps things from sliding all around. Who's a net? Huh. She's, she's in there. <laughs> I want to try one thing real quick, see if we can see it. Can you do me a favor, hop in, or actually, no, you come here. Okay. Take a look at this square right here. Okay. As I, uh, as actually I... actually a parallelogram, but whatever. Fair enough. <laughs> as I uh, start the car. Okay, let's see what he is talking about. Actually, I don't know if it's a starting thing or a locking or unlocking thing, so let me try it. Okay. We've locked it. Unlock. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Can you tell what it said? No. Actually, the people watching are not going to be able to tell at all what's happening because it it's flickering? constantly flashing on camera. Okay. Okay, do it again. R S3. Wow. <laughs> okay, so you guys that are wondering what it is that we're talking about. These individual little things spell out RS3 when you unlock it. That's actually really cool. And then it just goes to a, a, a pattern. It's like a checkered flag. A checkered flag. That's cool. Yeah. Sorry, guys. It's really like you got to be here to see it. Well, yeah. If you're curious, look it up on YouTube. I'm sure someone on TikTok or whatever has that. But That's pretty it's, neat. It's fun, yeah, because oh, it won't keep doing it, I guess. Timed out. One more. Nope. It's done with us. No. <laughs> Jeez. All right, should we do a little driving? Then I think we should on? do a little driving. I'll do a startup for you. Okay. I really like how these wheels look. This nice, like, brushed matte black. That's really pretty. seems like I'm slamming it. Honestly, it's one of my favorite things about Audis is, listen, I'm gonna turn the fan on a little bit so y'all can hear a little better. Listen to every little click, button, green, it all sounds so you know, it feels so good as well. From drive, like a drive, All the, everything you touch regularly, interact with, the steering wheel feels very solid and clicky. It's, it's the, That's cool. He just, I, I vaguely remember him, him changing it to just color. Yeah. Master of EG anymore. Zero. 
Savior, but it says, Try to help me. I'm in a flash flood. Four feet of water. Help. Savior. Wow. Uh, do you live in, I think it's Kentucky that was having flooding? Or uh, Louisiana, maybe? Well, Tennessee? Um, Ten maybe Tennessee. Tennessee? Tennessee uh, had a... Swim. That's my recommendation. A tornado? Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Say hello to Nathan Salazar, Matthew Alexis. Hello, everyone. is asking if the badge is black on this model only or if it's just a black optics package you're right we should take a look at the window sticker and see if we have some stupid black optics package <laughs> that's like a, a large amount of money for very little stuff dude uh, whoever specs cars for journalists they love to put black optics package on cars the i4 we have this week i think has a black optics package yeah and it's silly because all it does is inflate the price Oh, Xavier's asking, like, what to do if you're stuck in a flood in a car. He's, well, um, if you're in four feet of water in a car, you're probably going to die. Wait, yikes. I mean, unless you can push the door open, but that's a lot of water to that's push the door against. That's a lot of water, man. Uh, I would, I would suggest you stop watching YouTube. Uh, and Daily Motor like help, so better turn on Daily Motor. They'll tell me what to do. Uh, yeah. If you have a sunroof, I would swim out the sunroof. If you don't... If you don't have a sunroof... Yeah, shoot. Can you crawl out the back and open up your trunk? Although that might be lower. I don't know. I think if you open the window, you would change the pressure so you could open the door, maybe? I'm not sure. I don't know, man. Good luck. Let us know if you're okay. <laughs> not that we're ambivalent, we're just not masters in that situation. Yeah. Also, we're not there. Anyways, Ford guys, I hope you like that exhaust clip. And he's asking if this is Nardo Gray. It is not, actually. Chris and I thought it was, too. I just realized a lot of my things are still open back here. And look at it. Not flying around the corner. Oh. I'm keep doing the questions, then. Sure. Five-cylinder engine. Yep. Uh, or in 3NG4, is asking if this is a, what, or what red line is red line is 7,000 wow say that name again please. O R 3 N G 4 is that orange it might be okay it's kind of just needed to say O R 3 N G 4 okay orange it's like rust pd yeah rust pd or M S T W N T D. most yeah. wanted <laughs> Whoa, someone hit that sign. Someone took oversteer a little Whoa. too hard. Whoa, and it wasn't you guys? No. Ha. It was Chris, but he didn't say anything about it. <laughs> like, why is this big uh, damage spot in the car? Did we do that? <laughs> oh. oh, I bought it like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, most of says I'm more of a BMW guy, but this is a real solid and really solid interior. It was that guy. Crap. Um... Yeah, I agree. I, Chris and I were talking about if we'd rather have this or a BMW M2. And it would be tough at this point where this, this car kind of grows on you the more time you spend with it. So it would be, uh, it'd be a close one. It's, and, it's definitely pretty in here. For all the black that you have on the inside, I, I kind of like black interiors because they look so cool and crisp. But they also have a lot of like really cool textures in them. Yeah, I mean, once you go black, you never go back. Exactly. Yeah. Moran says hello. Hey, Moran. Moran, what do you think of the RS3? I feel like that would be a car you would be interested in, because it's just kind of unique and cool. Neat. Uh, KL says prestige, question mark? I don't know if they do. I mean, you probably know better than me. I'm not sure if they do prestige trims on the RS models. We're gonna Bronco. Or sort of. Oh, no, no. Yeah, there are 
Bronco, isn't it? <laughs> are, you a, are you a Bronco jail half full or a Bronco jail half empty sort of person? <laughs> uh, or three and G four says yes, it is orange. <laughs> That's funny. Thimios is asking if you'd prefer an RS3 or an AMG A CLA 45S. I, yeah, that's the one I'm not sure about. I haven't driven the new AMGs, uh, the 45 series. I've heard they're really good, but the thing is, I've always been a, I've, the, the M2 has always been a, a sweetheart for me. And the fact you can get the manual, the M2 would probably push me over to that. But the AMG is probably going to feel more manic. If, if this car has any, any downside, it's that it doesn't feel crazy enough. And I felt the same way about the Audi RS6 Avant. It was really cool but it felt kind of pedestrian. Whoa. And this has character, like I said in the beginning, but you kind of expect it to be more. Hmm. And it kind of isn't, but I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's just for me, I don't know. Is it trying to bridge a gap between people that want something that's cool and sporty, but are not, they like don't have. Yeah, I think it's a maturity or a refinement that they're looking for too. Well, it could be that, but I was going to say like they're not as confident behind the wheel to drive crazy. Yeah, yeah. And so they'd be a little more something. dialed back for that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Ron says that Daza sounds sweet. Daza? D A Z A? Maybe have something to do with the engine. Yeah. Or no, it's the exhaust. I think it has a Daza exhaast. Oh. Can yeah, you just cool. get this, your seat for a little bit, please? Yeah. <laughs> That's enough. That's nonsense. What's the audio system? It's a Bang & Olufsen, and it's okay. It's okay. I think it's decent. I haven't listened. I haven't actually had this car very much yet. Uh, Chris has been driving it. Neat. And then the Topher is getting it on Thursday. So you guys are getting a pretty raw first impression then. Yeah. I drove it around with Chris a little bit, but the color is... Kimora gray metallic. Kimora? How is that spelled? Kimora. Yeah. Kimora gray metallic, black interior. It has the RS technology package, which gives us Audi Connect, the Bang & Olufsen sound system with 3D sound, head-up display, the RS sport exhaust system with black tips, and here you go, black optic plus package. Not even just normal black optics, but black optic plus which gives you summer tires for some reason, 19 inch wheels and black Audi rings, badges and roof. So yeah, it's whoever put that black optics package on there. Um, was it, uh, I'm blanking on the, Steven, Steven, if that was you, no more black optics. We don't need it. All in $65,000. Okay. Built in Ingolstadt, Germany. Cool. Neat. Uh, Ford guy says, this is a Volkswagen Jetta. <laughs> it is not. I know it does kind of look like it, but trust me, it feels a lot better than a Jetta. <laughs> Orange says, yeah, does it have a Sono sound system? Please, I hope not. No. Nope, you still get the B&O with this, so good news there. Yeah, that Sonos we tested in the Q3 was not fantastic. Xavier says, honk the horn, but jingle bells, please. Boop, boop, boop. The problem is, we'll, we'll go down the more deserted road to do that. I don't want to do that by the airport here. We'll get attention. <laughs> Ooh, the leather's so soft. The Ru leather is rub, really like, right nice. Just, you know, yeah. yeah, this is nice leather. Mm -hmm. We feel it here, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really like the leather pattern. You like the, qu the, little, the quilted? The, the hexagons? Yeah. And it says RS in the front seats. I kind of like that it isn't Alcantara. It's just a nice leather. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. It feels like it would be, like if Alcantara was a leather. Mm. I feel like this. Nice. They probably make. Uh, Moran says five cylinder sounds cool, but not as cool as 2J. Fair enough. Yeah. Or not as cool as the R8 V10. This does not have ventilated seats. Does not. No. Probably pay for it. Yeah. Well, they paid, They should have paid for that and not the black package. I agree. Yeah, I think it's very silly. Most Wanted says, I find it really annoying that you can't even spec it as an option on the 3 Series. Oh, never mind. Oh, wait, no, 3s? Really? You can't get cooled seats on a 3 Series? That is kind of strange. 
You can get it on the 4 Series. Unless he means, and by 3, he might mean the Audi A3, S3, and RS3. Not the BMW 3 Series. Got it. Ron says Daza and DNWA is the engine code for the Audi 5 cylinders. There we go. That's, That's cool. what I thought it might have been, yeah. Kunal says the headlights say RS3 when you unlock the vehicle. Yes. Yeah. We tried to show you guys that earlier, but because the flicker, the flicker of LED lights mm -hmm. on camera doesn't actually show that, we got to see it, yeah. and it's cool. Yeah. But what? also, hi, Canal. <laughs> uh, Thymius is now asking if you'd prefer the RS3 Sportback or an RS3 sedan. Well, obviously the Sportback. It's a no-brainer. Wesley Lewis says it sounds like a Mini R8. Yeah, it like does an, have that. Like an cool. R8 with four doors. Ah, and Subja wants to know what your favorite SUV for 2021 and 2022 is. It's funny, on the podcast we talked about this quite a bit because we just had the Porsche Macan and it was very good. BMW X5 would be up there, Mazda CX-5 would be up there, Porsche Macan would be up there. That's cool. Nice. And maybe Tesla Model Y as well. I'm surprised that you actually threw that in after everything that you said. Because it's barely a crossover. Oh. SUV. Barely. It's more of a crossover than an SUV. It's like, I mean... Kunal says hi. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're caught. We should get Chandler in the chat, and then we'll have just a little car and driver road warrior party. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Intern, road warrior, whatever. That's where he's from. Yeah, I've heard that name before. Yeah, Kunal's been to our house. Was I there? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll cut up. Yeah. Cool. Let's do another quick walk around, and then um, then we can do some spirited driving. Yeah. You want some? Yes. Yeah. You get a big 32 ounce uh, Camelback. Fits in the side thing. That's that's yeah. important. Also, I like how classy the Bang and Olufsen thing looks. Cool. And you got the that thing there. They did a lot of neat little design elements to this car. It's they did a good job. And in this light, the, the paint looks quite blue, but other lights, it looks pretty gray. You can just stay in if you want. I'm just gonna get back in. Nice bright DRLs, stupid black Audi optics package blackness. Put it there so you see it. Didn't see. Car's too dark. Black interior. Mm. Also, this material is kind of fun. It's like yeah, an it's open neat. pore carbon fiber. Oh, it actually is. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I like about this car. It doesn't feel like it's trying to phone it in at all. It doesn't feel like it's trying to fake anything. For example, when we're driving and you have it in and you're, you're driving it aggressively, we'll talk about it here. The big single turbo, it takes a few minutes to spool up. Not minutes, obviously, but it takes it takes a second or so to spool up, and then you feel this whoosh of power. And it's kind of cool, because you don't really get that in a lot of new twin turbocharged cars and smaller turbos. The turbo comes on so quick that, yeah, it makes for smoother daily driving, and it makes for, it's probably faster in some ways, but it kind of lacks that, that wow factor and that character. And that's what kind of makes this car fun, is that character. So I'm gonna pull out here. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna shift in a second. I'm gonna give it like half throttle. I think 
the engine's a little quiet. Huh. I, I you hear it. You certainly hear it. Is but it piped in? I don't think it's really piped in. If it is, it's just subtle. I think the fact that it's the 7,000 RPM redline, you'd think we'd be hearing it a lot more. And it would be shrieking. But it's kind of just a guttural growl rather than a rather than a howl. Which I think would help. Plenty of grip. Brakes are excellent. Really speaks to that bulldog yeah. stance. It's just a growl. Yep. The steering is also really good. It's very light, but I kind of like that. It's it's a very effortless, uh, quick steering. Very, very quick steering, and I like that a lot. isn't bad even in in the most aggressive mode here but the um the tires are very thin so it's a little crashy over hard bumps we've got an entirely open road here so i'm just going to do a launch for you guys for free usually we charge for this <laughs> uh, we're gonna go Porsche Cayman GT4. Okay, wow. A fun one. Brower and I went and drove his friend's Cayman. That's right. That's neat. Yeah. So going back to Most Wanted's uh, comment asking about ventilated seats. Mm -hmm. He says it is available on ser uh, 4 Series like you said, but you can't get the laser lights on the 3 Series either, but you can get them on the 4. Frustrating yeah. when you can get ventilation on a Jetta that's half the price. Yeah, that is really weird that they don't put ventilated seats in the 3 Series. I wonder if that has a little something to do with their chip shortage. Like, it's like, mm. they they haven't added it because they, they just can't. John Galt uh, is in the chat. Said, just signed on. Does the RS have that classic Audi hesitation, or shall we say pause, when you first stop on the accelerator? Probably. Um... I wanted to try to get a nice clean on-ramp here. Don't think I will, but we'll test that in the next straightaway.
brake dust built up on his front wheels, I'm gonna say no. <laughs> Says, fun fact about Daza is it can handle up to 700 wheel horsepower. And the difference between Daza and DNWA is the chassis that, that it goes in. The uh, RS3 gets the Daza and the TT gets the DNWA. And the DNWA has different cams. Hmm. Yeah, the, the TT RS is a pretty cool car, that's for sure. Also, it has better high pressure fuel pump compared to Daza. Oh, now Xavier wants you to do <laughs> the horn jingle bells. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope you were able to hear that. It's a nice horn. Yeah, it is a nice horn. It's very well insulated from the outside. Yeah. Most one it says you can get the P0 Trofeo. Trofeo. Trofeo, Trofeo, <laughs> Trofeo R as a zero dollar option. Wow, that, that would make this a great track weapon. Yeah, that sense. would be an incredible amount of grip because, as you saw in that on ramp, this car already has a lot of grip. Yeah, I I would caution that it would probably make the car less fun on the street because then you wouldn't get to slide it around at all. But yeah, on track that'd be awesome. Kale says I ended up buying my 2018. S5 Sportback instead of the 2018 RS3 because I felt uh, the RS3 wasn't crazy enough. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. I can see that. Ah. Killer wants to know what the letter on the rear view mirror is. That's a directional. That's a, So that's north. Yeah, if we turn this way, it'll change to... Northeast. East. And then east. They don't see all too many of those anymore. No. I'm just they're closer than they appear. <laughs> Alright, neat. <laughs> it's funny because Killer said we need a launch control. Ah. And then Xavier said you need to donate five bucks. But then you just went ahead and did one. Oops. It's too cool for you guys not to get it. Right. Yeah, another great thing about Audis is the gauge cluster, which y'all aren't gonna be able to see right here. Let me turn around. Big old digital display and clicking around here you can get that full screen uh, map so you can see we are at an airport and you see the airport mm. isn't that cool mm -hmm. and then you can scroll it around zoom in if you wanted so if you're looking for individual streets or something or you can come way out how far out can you go Just in case you're curious which planet you were driving on, you can uh, zoom it all the way out. That's so cool. Oh, it's fun. Yeah. How far can the steering wheel turn? Not super far. It only goes, let's say about uh, one and a quarter. No, not even one. It just goes like oh nine tenths almost. Wow. Yeah. Neat. I mean, not neat. Lord Garth says, my buddy that works for VW wanted me to buy an Audi this time, but I just wrote a check for an N uh, X3M Comp. Oh, that's a car we're going to have next week. Ooh, maybe they will have it next week. Maybe they will. Maybe they will. Ron says, Trofeo R is terrible. <laughs> it takes an eternity to warm up, and after warming them up, they don't perform as good as the Michelin Cup. Are. Yeah, I have, I will admit I've been happier with Michelin's. Neat. We're caught up. Cool. Oh. Do a better Jingle Bells, please. Bruh. <laughs> How's this for Jingle Bells? It's a very satisfying car for driving well, for being a good driver and for being a fast see how some of you who just like to own might be a little bored by it. There are people out there, honestly, the driving experience
experience kind of matches the interior in that everything's so crisp and precise and, and refined that... Ooh, little burbs. Yeah, it's, it's, you can tell you're driving a premium product just like you can tell you're in a premium product here. Oh, look at this van stopping for no reason. If you had just never stopped, then you'd already We could have gone. Oh, Wells. Lord Garth asks if anyone uses a built-in nav these days. Yeah, I, I can see the use for just having the map. Now, admittedly, I never use the navigation of the nav, but I do use the mapping aspect of it, especially if your car doesn't have wireless CarPlay or Android Auto. All right, we're going to hope that this bike gets it from this light. Look at that Clatmobile police interceptor. Jeez. Oof. What is that from us? I think it's a victory. That's cool. So we have a little bonus on our live drive here. We're going to head back to DMHQ and Alyssa. Oh, go, Mr. Motorcycle. Oh, wow. People are just running the light. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. The motorcycle would have gotten killed if he went when I told him to go. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> All right, guys. Just had a car coming right in my lane. That's great. Of course, <laughs> it's a Dodge Journey. They heard us talking against the Dodge Journey uh, in the podcast and they were upset about it. Anyway, bonus today for you on the live drive. We got a second car, and it's going to be Alyssa's first time riding in my 2008 Ford Escape Hybrid from Copart. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. This car has 330,000 miles on it. Wow. Yep. Yeah, this is, this is going to be fun. And I have only driven it about 10 miles as well. Uh, the only work into it making it run properly. Not a lot of work. He popped out to take manifold, and I appreciate that, but it's not like he had to do anything. We have Volvo. Is that someone we know? No. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Always something going on here. Yeah. But there it is. Look at that. This is, this is a one-owner 330,000 miles. Wow. Literally only one person, one family has owned this vehicle since new. It's and pretty. Until me. And it's an Escape Hybrid, a vehicle that I've always been a fan of, especially this gen, because it was it was such an early to the to the hybrid game. So if you wanted a car that was both practical, easy to drive, and efficient, Escape Hybrid. Prior to getting into the Escape, mm -hmm. you still have some comments to answer. Okay. Alrighty. Um, I was one to know, wants to know how does the shift speed and aggression change uh, with the with the drive modes? It's not super perceptible, honestly. It's you'd be surprised. You'd think it'd be a little bit harder in uh, RS performance, but it's not really. It's quick though. It's quick in all the modes. Ryan wants to know if it passes his test. Uh, soft limiter and it will hold gears. That's pretty. Soft cool. limiter about forty one hundred RPM. Here, I can just show you. Um, Actually, 37, 3,800 RPM. And that, although, is that higher in RS performance? Let me see. Nope. It's not. It doesn't seem to be. Xavier wants to know how high and low the air conditioning can go. Low and then high. Yeah. <laughs> they I mean, just, it says low. Yeah. And then it just says high. Like, hello, high. Speaking of which, Omar says hi. Hi, Omar. <laughs> We're good. Cool. All right, here we go. So I intentionally haven't let Alyssa ride or drive in this yet because I want to get her raw first impressions and see how much she loves it on camera. Mm -hmm. Get a little, uh, little drink here. So here it is. It feels so different. My lime green. What are you, you saying this is going to drive differently than, uh, than the RS3? Probably. It, uh, it does have a little bit of, of kind of different paintish sort of look to it. Uh, yes, there are some panels that aren't super well attached. Um, this, this escape had an unfortunate run in with a deer. 
and it came out the loser. Although, to be fair, I don't know what happened with the deer. So we do have some cracks. Just prefer not maybe the most perfect alignment of all the panels, but I got a new hood from the junkyard. So it doesn't look that new, but it fits the rest of the car. Oh wait, this is that one? Yeah, oh. this is the new hood. I was like, oh, that's good. This looks awful. But this is a 2008 car with 300,000 miles. And look, this is about the, the worst rust on it. I don't know how that happens. Just very specifically right there. So do you have some paint fading? That, that's, a, that's a thing. We have a tow hitch, which is awesome. Yeah. And get ready for this interior, folks. Oh, the key is still in the car. I'll let you take this real fast. Sure. This is the most I've actually seen this car. Oh, there's a lot more rust right here. Ooh, that's real bad. Still has some salt on it. Not only is this a one owner car, but it's a local one owner. And so I was able to go to the dealership, Briarwood Ford, where it was purchased new and talk to them. And they said, oh yeah, super nice couple. They did all the maintenance that we said should that should have had. And now I haven't, vacuumed it yet but I have cleaned up the interior a good bit look at this not bad for a 300,000 mile car wow these seats are really clean yeah and that'll vacuum out really well put some yeah. floor mats in clean up the coffee stains I hope that's coffee what's that <laughs> nothing <laughs> Unfortunately, my windshield did suffer a crack. Ah. I don't really know how, but get a new windshield. Ooh, these seats are soft. Right? Much like the, like the Audi. Oh. Yeah, the headliner is also having a, a bit of a dysfunction. Buy it. It's, oh, it's a hybrid. <laughs> You've got navigation, just like the Audi. Whoa. Still works properly. We have the Sony surround system, or not surround, just sound system. And look at this little wall outlet right in here, should you want to uh, power any of your electronics very conveniently. Most wanted wants to know if donations for launches still apply here for the escape. Well, I wish sure. you guys could have seen his face. <laughs> sure. I just changed the oil today. Looks like they had a little bit of window tint on it, maybe. Also, I don't know if the air conditioning works, but we're gonna find out. Ooh, I hope it does. Just checking to make sure the windows work. And away we go. Look at this, no check engine lights. Perfectly clean dash. And there's the odometer right there for everyone to see. As it flashes by. 329249. So technically not 330 yet, but close. Don't know. Uh, Moran says my RS6 did the same with the limiter before getting bigger turbos. Uh, now it can bounce on the limiter as long as it wants. By the way, if anyone wants my RS6, it's for sale. Nice. Moran, you doing some uh, some clearing out? Are you doing that in, and you don't have to comment to us on our on your financial intentions, but are you planning on replacing it with more toys? or maybe getting ready for some buying opportunities in the market. Ah. This is a really smooth drive. Right? Yeah. You can go to this screen and view uh, your what your hybrid system Whoa. is up to, your fuel economy. We're gonna reset that. Doesn't really seem like the air conditioning is, oh, well, I have that 70. Maybe let's try turning it down to 60 and see if it gets colder. Copart special, ladies and gentlemen. 1200 bucks. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's actually really not that bad. No. I mean, I put some money into it. I'm probably in about 2000 ish dollars. Oh, and I do need to get a turn signal uh, bulb socket. Turn signal socket. And there's a there's a jack sitting in the back of the car that's making a little noise. I wondered what that was. I forgot to put that the away. Or something. 
I even left the little, um, little fake, what do you call this? A flower? Yeah, a little flower from the old lady who had it. It's an old Jewish lady. Ah. I wish Pittsburgh man were in for this. Yeah. I feel like he'd appreciate this. I'm, oh, I'm trying to adjust my seat, but I don't think I can. Is it manual? Yeah. Oh. I pull the, the handle out, like, it does not go up further. There's not a little power. There is, but like I pull it and it's oh, it's blocked by the seat. We're we're good. Oh. Oh what? Air conditioning's working. Oh my goodness. Nice. Look at that. Cool part special. Yeah. I mean, look. There's no vibration in the steering wheel. Brakes work very well. my first uh, real drive of it. Chris Brower and I took it around a little bit last night just to kind of uh, just giggles, but this yeah. is like my first daytime driving it. <laughs> the steering is really light. That's, That's cool. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah, yeah I, I like light steering. Or it, like is it supposed to be? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, the AC's getting real cool. It's now. really chilly. Just needed a minute there. Yeah. Like cars usually do. Yeah. Oh, it's got auto climate control, that's right. So, really, we pretty much just need to decide would we rather have the Maverick or this? You know? Because you all sat through the live drive of Alyssa talking about the things she didn't like about the Maverick. Well, this has heated seats, it has automatic climate control, it has power adjusted seats. Has a sunroof. Hmm. Hmm. I'm sure you could put an Apple CarPlay, a wireless Apple CarPlay system in this. You too. may be able to. Yep. Yeah. But you could probably also do that in the Maverick. It'd be tough with that new screen thing. It's hard to yeah. change cars infotainment systems. Uh, Gotta clean out some of the carbon in this bad boy. Yeah, we're doing practically highway speeds. Now the windshield does seem a little loud, but that might have something to do with the huge crack in it. <laughs> this is cute. Ron says, yes, I want to replace it with an E63S wagon already. The stock engine is maxed out on the RS6. Very nice. That's yeah. Cool. Good call. Most wanted said the escape hybrid walked so the Maverick could run. It's so cute. <laughs> That's cute. You'll see we have some light bulbs around here. Those are just waiting. Oh, and also broken bolts. Huh. Because in Michigan, things get rusty and then they snap when you apply torque to them. That's fair. Your, it's got dual zone climate control too. Mm. Oh yeah. Check mine. I heard clicks. So that's I good. did too. So most wanted says you could probably sell your Maverick for a profit, <laughs> which is something we've I've been telling Charlie for a while. I know I'm more. Order a Lariat. Yeah. Ooh, and then. Sorry to get the until it arrives. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, is yours getting hot? Yeah, it's warm. That's actually quite fast. Yeah. Yeah, definitely something we could put there. Yeah, window washer sprayers work. That's actually something that we didn't have on the Volvo. Yep. On our last in between our car. Yeah. I have I have yet to find anything that doesn't work in this car. Yeah. That's really cool. I don't know if she has any CDs and no discs. No. Four miles per gallon since I reset it, but I've been going a little hard on it. <laughs> now it's Alyssa's turn to drive. Okay. Who are two in? This is three. 
is a 2008 Ford Escape Hybrid purchased off Copart with 329,000 miles. I'm going to let Alyssa get comfortable and I'm going to try to put that jack away in the back. It's kind of difficult to do. Doesn't look like there's seat memory. I would be very surprised if there were. Yeah. One thing that was fun with these escapes is you could open the glass separately. Although it doesn't look like mine. So that's the first thing I've found that doesn't work. Oh, maybe it's because the car's running though. Uh, yes. Can you hit the unlock button, please? What's that? Unlock button, please, by the door handle. Now let's try. There we go. Yeah, see, it does work. Just had to be unlocked. It does feel like maybe it could use a strut or two. Oh snap, I forgot that is a thing. This uh, this latch is broken. Hmm. There it is, there's one thing on this car that's yep. broken. One thing not working properly is this latch. Forgot about that. I don't know how we're gonna remedy this. I think I need... Do you need help? Not yet. Although, yeah, if you want to come back and film, that might be good. One thing I forgot about with old types of leather seats is how painful it is when you're wearing shorts in the summer and your skin peels off the seat. Ah, yes. Yeah. Spoiled with your cloth. I know. Who'd have thought? <laughs> I think if I can push this back. Let's try now. I hope you all are entertained. Are you not entertained? Comments we can do at least? Right uh, probably. I left them in the car. Can I go grab them? Yeah, Charlie's pants maps the car. All right. Xavier says goodbye. Bye, Xavier. Audio Fanboy says you should do a Copart walk around video. Like in Copart? Yeah. In Copart? Is that what you mean? The Thinios is a laughing a bunch. And then Most Wanted is offering suggestions. Maybe press the unlatch button while pushing the glass down. I'm going to try that. I can see what needs to happen. I know I've fixed it before. I just had a more of like a pen on me. I need, I need oh. something like small and I left my camera bag back at the garage. Ah, uh, I see. Killer says 10 out of 10 live stream for real. You're very kind, Killer. Thank you. It's almost there. If I can just get it to stay just like that. Yes! Very good! Imagine if I just opened it up. Oh my gosh. So that's something that will need to be fixed. Also, does anybody know how to get these jacks back in? That's the other thing you guys get to watch. Oh, geez. 
Well, I'm okay with not even driving. <laughs> Chris Brower said, I was screaming, no, if you open the glass. <laughs> yeah, Chris has a better memory for those sort of things. Okay, so this goes, you can keep reading comments to me as I'm doing this. That was the latest one. Okay. Okay, and then I think this goes. This is silly, guys. You guys are getting like the raw experience here. we should do this right now. No? No. I think we're fine. Okay. I think we should re resume the video. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're pretty much done, so... Yeah, but we gotta get back and people want to see me drive and stuff. Okay. Well, we're just gonna have that rattle then. Cool. I really just want to drive it. Fair enough. Okay. Is that as high as you can go? Yes. It does have the front seat. Like you do different. like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. I keep on hitting my finger and stuff. So. Chris, I don't know at what point you tuned in, but uh, oh, this doesn't come in or out. Really? More at all? No. Wow. But the air conditioning does work, so that's nice. Also, we have a donation from Most Wanted. Thank you very much. And he said, it's time. So I think you need to launch it too. Okay. I hope I don't break it. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a gentle launch. It won't be like a brake torque screen or launch. on these early hybrids were really weird because it's it's like regening regenerating electricity and really? they weren't very good at like blending the braking back then that's interesting because i press on the brake and like there is not a lot of give there no. but the car is stopping so mm -hmm. <laughs> that's so interesting yeah it's a very strange feeling yeah it wasn't until recently that they got they got better at that I don't really see it as a downside. As long as it breaks when I put my foot there, <laughs> I don't really care. Brakes are really, really, really strong. Right. Okay. All right. Give her the beans for most wanted. Okay. I'm gonna do one foot on the. No, don't. Yeah, just, just the gas. Just, just the do gas. a progressive, like, two second kind of onto the. Ripping it. <laughs> the softest rip. Yeah. If it was like a, a fart, it'd be like a. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Wow. He wants the specs on this Ford Escape. Well, um, I don't know the specs off the top of my head. All I know is it's not very fast, and it has the same, unfortunately, the same hybrid powertrain as the previous. said 
Report escape. Let's escape the room. <laughs> <laughs> Very tan interior. Very tan. Very light compared to uh, compared to that Audi. The black interior of the Audi. Yeah. A lot of back seat room. This is coming in hot in the roundabout. Uh, yeah, I guess. She's used to the RS3. <laughs> Yeah, I did not try that. So yeah, any last questions or thoughts on the Audi RS3 or the 2008 Ford Escape Hybrid? Let us know. We're going to get wrapping things up here soon. This is not a I will go into the left lane to pass the right <laughs> lane for. Right. Look, there's an Escape towing a oh. It's just like us. Jet skis. <laughs> Thanks for the launch. Glad nothing broke. <laughs> You're welcome, <laughs> Most Wanted. And thank you for the dono. We'll be back next week with probably the Ford F-150 Lightning. I think that's probably what we'll do for the live drive. We'll also have the X3 M Comp and maybe the G80 Electric. But I think the, the Lightning will be the most interesting car for us to live drive. I'm actually really excited to see that, that Lightning. Truck. Yeah, I think a lot of people will be. That's, be a, really neat. that's a good one. Does this have a CVT? Oh yes, and it's the not super great kind of CVT that just whirs away. Mm. But it's efficient. Initial thoughts? Not clapped. Thousand miles more than me, right? Yeah. Right. Have a good. However, the escape clearance is not fantastic. They routed the exhaust quite low on this car. I noticed that today when I changed the oil. So probably not today, but hey, maybe in the future we'll consider that. There's the RS3 for any of you who are hoping to see that. No backup camera is probably the biggest bummer for this car. Because it's like, oh, I could totally go right there. My mirrors are off, so I'm not even going to pay attention to Yeah, lines. it's all good. As long as you just don't crank the curve, we'll be fine. Cool, so hopefully someone will be willing to pay $4,000 for this car. <laughs> and That'd I, be great. I can yeah. see it. I mean... Yeah. What I really could do if I wanted to be deceitful is just swap out the gauge cluster with one that's 107,000 miles. But I'm not going to do that. Yeah, you're not like that. Nope, I'm an honest person. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, your phone is at 8%. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, well, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that one. We will be back soon with uh, X with Ford F-150 Lightning. And thank you to Alyssa for coming along and helping, as always. You're welcome. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you all for entertaining and all the good stuff. We're Charlie and Alyssa with Daily.